Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about 2022. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna title this yet because when I started thinking about this idea, I was thinking about my dating and singleness journey of 2022, but then it kind of just stemmed into literally everything I've learned that the Lord has taught me, what I've went through, like things that have stuck out. And then I even like went through, this is probably not even like readable. I went through like my journal last night for like hours. I just felt like I wanted to do this video. I'm so glad that I started journaling this year because I would not have been able to see like, I was like, what did I go through in January and February? Like, I don't even remember that. I feel like March was whenever it really started to become memorable and like a part of my story now, which obviously January and February were too. It kind of was all just a blur. Like, I cannot believe that 2022 is over. It's insane to me. I just went through my, I don't know, I just felt, obviously it was probably the Lord. I was watching someone else's video where they were like talking about all the things that they've done in 2022. I just was like, you know what? I feel like the Lord has taught me a lot and I don't feel like I've talked about any of it because I didn't really film any videos and I feel like when I did, they weren't really sit down chatty videos. So I just wanted to do this and you know what? There's one person person that watches this and is impacted that is great and I'm so glad and that's all glory to God for that this is even going to bring joy to me and reflection for me and closure to me and so not only is this just for me but also maybe y'all can learn something maybe the Lord will speak to you through this but I mean if you're someone that has walked closely with me in my life then you're gonna know pretty much all this because I am very much a person of like things that I go through I'm in them sometimes they suck but then in that situation I'm trying to figure out what the Lord's trying to teach me there and then also just looking ahead to knowing that it will end and like he's gonna get me through it after I'm out of it I don't like to forget about it I use that and I look back on that and I see how the Lord can use that and where I'm at right now and use that in other people's lives like I never want to forget what I go through because I think that the Lord puts us in people's lives and puts people in our lives that have gone through the same things as us and that will go through the same things as us and we're going to be used as a light and someone that can relate to them and someone that can validate their feelings and someone that can speak truth into them and vice versa. This year I've really discovered the importance of wise counsel, the importance of friends that speak truth in your life, you speaking truth and love to your friends. But anyways, this is the longest intro ever. I'm going to just go ahead and jump into it and I think I'm going to go by month. Might as well. Let's just go ahead and get into it. I feel like the Lord has taught me a lot this year. I feel like the Lord teaches me a lot through the things that I go through and even though in the moment they seem like they are very hard things, I think that that just gives more glory to God because when you get out of it you're like, oh. What I thought was funny was last night whenever I was reflecting on all of this, I was like, school? is not really involved in any of this. Yes, the Lord has definitely taught me things through school and I've learned a lot through this season of like being in nursing school and not being able to hang out with friends as much, being alone a lot more and from my grades and from just like trusting the Lord with that. But like school ain't on the top tier at all. Like that's not really in this at all. In the grand scheme of things, you know, will it actually be important? Obviously you need your degree for whatever you're gonna do if you need one, but just saying. So let's just go ahead and start with the month recap. Honestly, January, February and March were we're all very focused on my roommate issues and if you know who my previous roommate was if you are my previous roommate if you know anything about that this is not me trashing my previous roommate at all but it was a very prevalent issue and I kind of forgot how much of an issue it was because I've went through so many things since then that have like taught me a lot more than that did. I think that I can also look back on that and realize that things that I've learned now would have helped me a lot then. I feel like my biggest issue in that was that I was very much self-seeking. I'm not gonna speak for her, but I feel like I was very selfish and I just feel like that's honestly the stem of a lot of issues is selfishness and only looking at yourself. And it comes up later whenever I really got smacked in the face with that. I don't know. I'm not really gonna talk much about that because I'm all, once again, I'm not trying to trash that person. Also, as you can see, like it really Really isn't a big deal now like that was such a big stressor in my life then and now that I live alone I'm like <sighs> It's in the past, like, it's a good time now. Once again, like how I was saying, like using your situations to help others, because I feel like that's one area I do that in. I don't forget about the guys that I've had interest in or learned from them or that have treated me crappy or whatever. I don't forget that. So I 
keep that at the forefront of my mind so that I can help people with that. But I feel like when it comes to like roommate issues, I kind of have suppressed that a little bit just because I'm like, whatever, I live alone now. So it just, it's not a problem for me. But obviously that doesn't really help people that do have that issue still because it's life. Like roommates aren't gonna get along sometimes. And I'm not saying that the cure for everyone is to live alone because not everyone could do that financially, mentally. So I had a lot of expectations when it came to her. I think that they were unrealistic expectations. I feel like I was always putting these like things that she should have been doing on her and she didn't even know about them. Another thing that I started doing in January was I started listening to Morning with the Masters every day. And one thing that Tori always says, you can't expect what you don't express. But then by the time I ex expressed it, it was too late and like I had already had all this hurt. It just wasn't a good situation and it was a lot of it was on me because it was all in my head and I never let it out. Then February, I didn't know where this fell in, but then when I was reading my journal, I saw whenever I learned this, I was walking out of the library, I was on the corner. Like I remember it so vividly because I think that I had seen one of the guys that like was a really big part of my life that hurt me a lot but also that I learned a ton from like the most probably I've ever learned from because it was really my first like wake up call ever I think I had like seen him and like I was just thinking about how crappy he was honestly <laughs> once again if you know who I'm talking about I'm not trying to trash them I just remember being like you know what I used to be so dependent on this person's feelings on the way this person treated me on the way that this person pursued me on the way that this person acted towards me if they didn't do what I wanted or if they didn't do what I expected or if they acted a different way even though we weren't even like together so they had no obligation to me but it was just like my heart and my feelings were so dependent on how they treated me I was like why would I ever think that that would satisfy me or that I would get joy from that or that I would be fulfilled like be stable because that's not stability like if you're depending on someone else's feelings like you up and down and up and down and that was one thing that Sarah taught me was she was saying how when the sky was like up and down up and down and she was like she was like I'm right here like I'm with the Lord like I'm steady because I'm holding on to the Lord I'm not like hanging on with you and going up and down with you he's up here and I'm I'm still steady because like I'm walking with the Lord and not dependent on you I thought that was a really cool thing and that's another thing that's like been really good is being able to see how the Lord will like teach Sarah things and then teach me things and then I teach my other friends things. It's just like he's like really putting us through. Maybe not even the same situations, but you can apply the same things to it. She would tell me that like a week or two later, or maybe a month, whatever. I would go through that and then I wouldn't really understand it until I went through it and then I was like, oh my gosh, like this is what she was talking about. Anyways, even when I have a husband, I can't be depending on my husband for my happiness, for my joy, for my stability, for my satisfaction because he is not perfect no guy is ever going to be perfect and it's not their fault like this is not me trashing guys i would say the same thing about me like i don't ever want a guy to become dependent on me i don't want a guy to ever be seeking his joy his satisfaction his stability in me that was one thing that i worried about when i was dating someone was that oh my gosh we haven't had this conversation yet like i don't know if he's depending on me for this like i don't want that because i'm not doing that it was so random that i had that wake-up call like in the parking lot of the library march rolls around i feel like i was at the place where i was like i literally remember writing it i remember thinking it i remember telling my friend this i was like you know what i'm actually for once in my life i feel like i'm content in my singleness and i would be mad if a guy asked me on a date literally like the next week like my brother texted me about like his friend and he asked for my number and i was like but then at the same time, like, I was like, I don't want to say no. It's kind of funny because, you know, like, whenever I had my plan of, I was going to have a boy by this time, get married by this time, blah, blah, blah. I was so set on that plan that I wasn't letting the Lord, like, show me the other thing, which was, like, being single and being content and that, learning all these things in my singleness. On the flip side, I was content in my singleness. I wanted to be single. But once again, it still doesn't matter. Even if that's what I wanted, I can't just say no because that's what I wanted. I want to desire what the Lord has for me and what he desires for me. I just was like, well, I have to give up a chance because it would be no different for me to say no being content in my singleness than it would be saying yes whenever I'm not content in my singleness if that makes sense I don't know either way I wouldn't be letting the Lord do his work I'd be taking it into my hands sorry if this is rambly you know I'm just kind of processing I'm reflecting you know so this guy asked me out but then I remember I had a huge like exam and I was like and then it was spring break and I was going to Oregon and I was like no I don't want to do this so we ended up like hanging out a couple times we didn't go on a date until like the first week of April I think at that point me and my roommate had like figured out that we weren't going to be living together anymore after the semester ended so that was kind of nice because there's a lot at the end of the tunnel you know also in March one of my best friends had her baby and so she's been obviously like a huge light and joy in my life like since March and I can't believe that 
we had life before her. So then the first week of April was whenever I went on the actual date. We had went on a few walks and like talked and I had already known that I didn't really see anything happening just because I felt like we weren't in the same place in our faith. I just felt like every time that we would talk about something, like it was really good conversation and we talked about really deep things and it was a good time. Oh, I struggle with this. And then I'd be like, oh, well, like I also struggled with this. And then I explained like how I got through it. But then when I was referring to like when I struggled with it, it was like two years ago or three years ago or whatever. And that's not me judging like him and his walk or anything. I think that everyone obviously is going at their own pace at different times in their faith. For me personally, like I want to be as equally yoked as possible. That would not have been the case. I would have definitely been leading, but it was also literally like my first date ever. The first guy that had actually like, pursued me in that way and like asked me on a date. All the times before that I had liked a guy, I had been so dependent on them. My heart was so involved and I was like head over heels, like right away. My heart got so involved and it was not protected protected at all but then I feel like I kind of flipped the switch and like my heart was really guarded the way that I saw it was like I was like deep in this singleness hole like did not want to get out him asking me on that date kind of pulled me out of it a little bit I realized this later but when I was content in my singleness in March ish like I was just suppressing my desire to have a boyfriend I wasn't lifting it up to the Lord I was just like oh I see a guy that's attractive and I would like shove it down and I'd be like nope not now that's not the Lord's plan for me it's definitely possible to be content in the wrong way because I was not actually content I just was saying that I was content but I, I genuinely thought I was content but I didn't realize it until afterwards and this was like months afterwards that was the first time that i had ever been able to like go on a date with a guy and like not become so like infatuated and attached and like dependent i had always been that kind of girl sorry to say it but i was i was very obsessive it was in probably like an acceptable way as in like most people do that and don't realize that's wrong and i'm not saying it's wrong, but it's hurtful. It just does more harm than good on you and on the guy. Anyways, that was the first time I got to end a flirtationship, as I would call it, because I had had flirtationships before, but I never went on an official date. Technically, I did, like, my freshman year, but it doesn't really count because it was, like, a date that ended our flirtationship, so I don't really count it. That was the first mature breakup I had ever had. It wasn't a breakup. We literally just didn't go on another date. But then we were friends after that, and it was fine. It was great and not awkward at all, and we were good. Then, literally, as it was, like, the weekend before, or went on the date with this guy that like one of my guy friends was like hey one of my friends is interested like i know that you have been bringing this guy to our college ministry and i was like oh like yeah we're going on a date but i'm not really expecting it to go anywhere so just tell him to shoot his shot at the end of april i was also asked on another date and i was like oh my gosh i'm such a hoe <laughs> so i get taken on my second first date <laughs> yeah and it went really well and it was a guy that was like really mature and really great and we clicked and it was just like everything was aligning once again like i said that i was in a singleness hole and then this dude asked me on a date and i was kind of like brought up out of it i don't feel like i would have been able to be as opened up with the second guy as I did if I hadn't have been like pulled out a little bit by that first guy. So I really think that he was used to like kind of get me out of my comfort zone and then was able to actually like be ready for the second guy. That was the first guy that I had been like, I really liked him a lot and he liked me a lot and I'd really never had that before. I'd never been so open about that. It was really good because I had never been shown what like an honest man, like a communicative man, a man that literally would tell me like what he was thinking first. He would never make me go first. I think that that was like something that I needed to have to be shown that that is possible because I literally did not know that that was possible. Anyways, we probably went on like four or five dates. I just had never been like pursued by a guy like that. Had never went on obviously that many dates and had never been that close to a relationship. I also had all these things that I had learned from the previous flirtationships that I had that I was applying to this which was the first time that, that had ever happened there were so many things that I learned from this man he raised my standards and I did not ever think that was possible because I thought I had like impossible standards but I had never seen what a true man of God looked like anyway so we dated as in going on dates for three or four weeks it was so weird because we were so like in into each other that's so cringe but we were then we hung out one time it was after I had been gone and after he had been gone and then we hung out and we were like, like I left that feeling like, why did that feel so comfortable? Like I didn't feel nervous. I didn't feel giddy. I feel like I feel more like friends now. We went on another date a few days later and I'd been praying about it. So we would write down questions and he was like, do you have any questions? And I was like, no, I just have some things I want to talk about. And then I asked him if he had any and he said he had one. 
and I was like, okay. And he's like, do you ever feel like we feel more like friends than like a romantic relationship? And I was like, you literally read my mind. You are saying the words that I was concerned about. It was really cool to see that the Lord brought us both to the same place and neither of us talked about it because we were both pursuing the Lord. He put that same feeling or like disturbance in us. And then we literally like sat there and reflected upon like the last few weeks of what we learned from each other and like how we didn't have any bad blood. So it was really good. And that was like another thing that like I was shown how a man of God should be and also how it can end if it's done right. It was obviously really hard and I thought that it was gonna be easy because I was like, oh, like because I felt this way and because this was a relief, like it's gonna be easy to get over. Obviously the Lord didn't give us peace about it so we didn't move forward. It was actually really hard because all the other guys that I've ever gotten over, I've been able to like pinpoint something which this might be like kind of unhealthy. I would always be able to be mad at them for something. That's what I focus on. That's how I got over them. There was nothing to be mad at him about. Like we weren't perfect. Like we had our disagreements. We could have worked through that. That was like in the middle of May because I had talked to this man like every day. He had been so involved in my life for like the last month that like I like wanted to talk to him like every day three seconds. I was also reading Job at this time, I think, but I realized accountable friends are so important. I would not have been able to do it without them. I am so thankful for my friends that were able to tell me the hard truths. There would be some people that I would ask and they'd be like, oh yeah, just if you want to text him and text him. If you want to call him, call him. That's not what I needed to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Even whenever they told me that, I was like, that's not right. Like, I don't need to do that. So then I would go to my friends that would like tell me the truth. And then they'd be like, Allie, you really need to talk to the Lord about it. And that's when I realized that I wasn't really going to the Lord about it. May and June was whenever I kind of learned the Lord cares about your feelings. I never knew or thought of the fact that the Lord would want to hear like how I was feeling. I would literally scream and like be mad, frustrated. Like, I don't understand how this happened. Like why this happened? Why you put me through this? Why you got me so close? And then I didn't get it. As I was trying to get through that, I was looking back through the guy that had really hurt me and that I always thought that it would be impossible to get through that and impossible to get over him and I was like I got over him I got through it so I can do it again. I really had never realized this was in the Bible until Sarah always tells me like, that's your Ebenezer. Then last night I even looked up a little bit and it's in 1 Samuel 7, 12. It's a lot in 1 Samuel. I think that's really the only book it's in actually. Ebenezer means stone of help. 1 Samuel 7, 12 says, thus far the Lord has helped us. Like that's why it was called an Ebenezer. It's a reminder of God's victory. I just thought that was really cool. And so now I use that. Just the ways that the Lord has shown himself and shown how he has victory victory and how he can make good out of bad. That was whenever I really started giving the Lord my emotions. And that's also whenever I just broke down one night and I was like, I feel like I went backwards before I dated him. Like I was so content. I didn't need a guy. And like now I see guys and I want them because I saw how good it could be. Once again, Sarah. Sarah was literally like the person that I trust the most. And she speaks the most truth into me. She was like, I really don't think that you are content. Like, I think that you are suppressing those feelings. Like I don't think that you are seeing an attractive guy in the being like, okay, Lord, if this is from you, then he's going to pursue me. And if not, then it's not going to happen. But instead I was just like, oh, he's attractive. Like I need to forget about that. So that was really good. That was a good reality check, I guess, of like, oh, I wasn't perfect before. I feel like my biggest pieces of advice for like getting over someone or like going through a breakup or going through whatever, to give your emotions to the Lord, to express your frustration, express your sadness, express your anger, express literally everything to him because he wants to hear it. And it would also be to reflect upon what you learned from that because I don't think that things happen in our lives without a purpose. What did you learn from that? What did the Lord teach you through that? What were the positives that came out of it? And maybe if it's a negative, then how can that be turned into a positive? If it's somewhere where they fell short, that's a positive because it shows you something that you don't want in that next person. I feel like that can be applied to a lot of things. That was pretty much June realizing that like I didn't go backwards and I had to acknowledge what the Lord had taught me and I just literally made a list and I was like, you know what Lord, this was not a mistake. I should not regret this happening because I learned so much and you taught me so much and you showed me so much through that. In July, I kind of had this epiphany of if we choose to wait for God's best, like we're choosing to have control, like we're taking control by giving control to the Lord, if that makes sense. Now I wouldn't really go by that, but I feel like in that season, 
reason that's what I needed because I'm very much a person that loves control. I'm gonna take control by giving the Lord control. I'm deciding to wait for God's best and to wait for what the Lord has for me instead of like taking things in my own hands. I feel like there's been multiple situations where I could have not listened to the Lord, but like that's just not who I am. I can't like know that the Lord is not giving me peace about that and still go along with it, which I didn't realize until like probably a month ago because of Sarah, you know, she teaches me literally everything, which I'm not saying Sarah is like perfect. The Lord definitely teaches her things to teach me. So I know that they're from the Lord. Then August was whenever I was really like slapped with the 70 times 7 thing in like Matthew 18, 22. That whole like chapter basically is about, I'm probably gonna butcher this, so just go read it. But basically there's this master and this slave runs to him and he's like, master, like, can you forgive my debts? Like, I can't pay you back. And then he's like, you're forgiven of these debts. Please don't quote me on this. And then the slave, who is forgiven or the servant, whoever he is, whatever, runs to his servant and he's like, you need to pay my money right now. Like I need it or you're gonna be kicked out. And he's like, I don't have it. Like, can you forgive me? And he was like, no. Then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Not only had I not forgiven my previous roommate, and I was very bitter and angry about that, I feel like I also hadn't forgiven the Lord about not letting that guy work out. So I, for the longest time, had 70 times seven written right here. Then that also stemmed into the childlike faith thing. Luke 18, 17, truly I tell you anyone who will not receive receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. I kind of learned about how childlike faith played into forgiveness because um, over the summer I worked at camp. There was a little girl that came and sat by me, like I was working in the gymnastics station. She came and sat by me, was really sad, and I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, so-and-so called me a name or is not being nice or was mean or something like that. So I went up to the little girl and was like, hey, so-and-so said that you are being mean to them. Can you come ask her to play? She was like, yeah, like I didn't mean to. And so she came up and was like, you to come play with us and she immediately got up and like went and played with them and was happy again in that moment i was like oh my gosh how oblivious like that's not how the real world is how can you forgive her that easily me and my jaded self that has had a lot of hurt and bitterness i was literally judging <laughs> this little girl's childlike faith this childlike forgiveness because she forgave so easily that is literally how we're called to be is to forgive like children and to have a childlike faith where you just trust i've been forgiven so much like why would I not want to give that same forgiveness to someone. Also, how much more freeing it is as well. Whenever my previous roommate like did something during the semester and she explained what happened, I was like super mad, jumping to conclusions and she told me the truth and I was like, okay. I forgive you. Old Allie would not have done that first of all. She would have harped on it. She would have been mad about it. Not only was that action more beneficial to me, but it was also more beneficial to her. Maybe she didn't see the Lord in that, but to me that was like, I was like in way less mental turmoil just by saying, okay, I forgive you and like letting it go than like storing it away, holding it against her later. I don't know. I thought that was a huge thing and I literally forgot about that until I was reading my journal last night and I was like, oh, that's good stuff. Also at this point, I was still like fighting with like wanting to talk to him, but I knew that I shouldn't like, and I had made like a deal with the Lord. I was like, if I see him, then I'll talk to him, but I'm not going to text him or call him because I just don't feel like that would be good. And then September was another wave hitting me. I was just worrying about all these things that were not in my control. Still about this guy, I kept giving myself such a hard time because I was like, I should be over this by now. Why am I still thinking about this? Why am I still thinking about him. Then I realized that like I was the only one that was trying to like hurry myself up. The Lord was right there with me. He wasn't rushing me. Like my friends were there with me. They weren't rushing me. They were just like, are you giving up to the Lord? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I forgot that I had to do that. That was another thing I learned this whole semester was like, I can learn something once and then not ever use it. If I don't actually intentionally try and like practice and give it to the Lord and intentionally go to the Lord about it. I'm gonna lose it and it's not gonna be a reflex anymore if I don't train it to be, if that makes sense. So that was whenever I was like, oh, I have to be intentional about talking to the Lord, about giving it up to the Lord, about telling him about my feelings because I had kind of fallen out of that. And I was like, oh, I learned this amazing piece of advice like two months ago, why I'm already falling out of it. October. <laughs> 
<laughs> was when I really got smacked with some reality. I realized that I was a very bitter person and that I was kind of taking it out on literally everyone in my life that had a significant other. I would get sad whenever someone would like talk about their boyfriend. That was just a knee jerk reaction for me. I wouldn't even think about it. Even if I wasn't actually sad about it, like I would do a sad face. I would make the person that was talking about it feel like they couldn't talk to me about it because they thought that I was sad, which I was. Really what I was, it was I was bitter, not towards them, but towards the Lord for not giving me that, which was a really hard pill to swallow because I had to literally like admit and be like, I am so wrong and I am so selfish. And that's kind of when I realized I had been selfish like literally all year. I've been a terrible friend to my friends that have started dating these guys, I'm not like interested in their life. I'm not excited when they tell me about him. And so I started trying to work through that. And then October to November, there was just a lot of changes in my life, including the fact that I literally have no single friends. <laughs> I have one single friend back home. And then I have like people that are single that I'm just not as close to. Literally all the friends that are like right in my life all the time that I'm closest to are not single. And that was also a very hard reality because I had major FOMO and I was like, I don't even want a boyfriend. I just want to not be left out. I also got some closure about the guy. I feel like I worked through a lot of like my ill intentions. Like I had realized that the reason I wanted to talk to him was not for these pure intentions that I thought it was. I realized that that was like a very wrong thing to do. Also in November, I read Acts. I had never read Acts before. I had tried multiple times. I think I'd gotten halfway through it, but I just didn't get anything out of it. But my small group leader started Acts like two weeks to the end of the year. I was like, why would she start this two weeks before we're leaving? But I was like, I don't even care because I want to read Acts so bad. And so then I read Acts within like two weeks. One thing that I had been struggling with was like feeling like I was in this place of stagnancy while everyone else around me, their lives were changing and they were getting boyfriends and they were doing this and they were doing that. I just was here and I was just standing here and I was getting to watch all of it happen and not have any change of my own. My life was changing because it was affected by other people's changes, but I was like, I want my life to change and affect others, which obviously is also a very selfish way to live. Once again, Sarah was like, you know what? Don't view this time in your life as a place of stagnancy, but view it as a place of consistency. I can be a constant, I can be consistent with like these people that are having all these life changes. So that was a good perspective change. But then also I read Acts. I was just blown away because I realized that Paul was literally in prison for two to three years. He like got two or three chances to come out and like tell his side whenever they would let him out and he would tell his testimony. He would tell them how the Lord literally like freaking smacked him down and was like, why are you persecuting me? The fact that every time he came out and was glorifying the Lord and there was no bitterness, he wasn't upset. He wasn't like, why Lord am I in this cell? Like, why are you keeping me in here while I could be out there doing your work? He wasn't questioning God and he was just glorifying him when he got the chance. I'm not even in prison. I have the ability ability to be glorifying the Lord all the time, not just these three times out of the three years. Why am I better? Why am I angry? Why can I not just see what the Lord is doing, what he can do? Instead, I'm just like sitting in this whole like self-pity and FOMO and all the things. If Paul did not view that as a stagnant season, like I'm not going to view this as a stagnant season. While I was reading that, that was like the first time I had really like dug into a book and like had been consistent, like reading every day, spending time with the Lord every day. Even after I finished that, like I was reading this devotional. This really challenges you and it's called Teach Us to Pray by Jim Branch and it's so good. I was being so filled up and so satisfied. Oh, so this is what it looks like to be satisfied with the Lord because I wasn't thinking about that guy. I wasn't thinking about being left out of my friend's like relationships. I was just filled up. Here we are in December. I'm just chilling. I feel like I'm the happiest I've been in a while, the most joyful I've been in a while, the least self-seeking I've been in a while. Even though like in this last week or two, because I've been working night shift, it's really hard for me to spend time with the Lord like in the word whenever I'm working. And so, I mean, I still like obviously try and find time for him. Like I'll listen to the devotion in the morning. I'll listen to worship music. I'll pray to him, like talk to him throughout the day or whatever, but not digging into the word. And I was like, that's still cool that even though I haven't been doing like a perfect quiet time, I'm still like honoring the Lord with my day. I'm still putting him at the center, even though it doesn't look like how it's supposed to look like. I thought that was really cool when I was thinking about that. Like I was like, I haven't necessarily been doing the right thing. I'm still content. He's still enough, even though I'm not filling time with that, if that makes sense. I know that sounds bad, but I'm obviously not perfect. And I really feel like this is a good starting point for that because I was able to just like reflect on all of the hard things I've been through this year, but also like, all of the things that the Lord has taught me through that. And I think that that's so cool. I think that it's really sad whenever people can't look back on 
on their hardships and find the hope in it and I just want everyone to be able to do that and I want everyone to know the love and the hope of Jesus and his promise that he's going to work all things for the good of those who love him but also for the glory to his name. I'm excited for 2023. I can't believe it's a new year though like I think it's absolutely insane and it flew but I'm excited because I feel like this is the first time that I'm going into a new year in this good of a place. I really pray and hope that this encouraged you. Sorry that it was probably a longer video and very rambly but this was literally my whole year wrapped up into one video because I literally barely posted this year but maybe next year will be better but I can't make any promises because nursing school is absolutely insane. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that it brought you some encouragement and some hope and some love and some Jesus and maybe some inspiration for the new year. If you did enjoy this I would love if you would subscribe down below and please give this video a big thumbs up. It would help me out a lot and also help spread the word and the hope of Jesus and the hope even through hardships and maybe just some dating or singleness advice or whatever. Thank you so so much for watching and I hope you all have a happy new year. Bye! Bye.